pastor died at a preacher's campus down in California. So, um, there's a lot of money that's been fired. Uh, the gentleman that was up preaching from here, the elder of the church, is a person to be sure. But it's him invited him to come down and do that. And I guess they've been each other for a while. So, it's kind of nice that pastor kind of expanded his church all over the place. But he's put it in the house and he's real black and he's able to do that. Now, I was thinking, um, I don't know about this a bit, but I probably started working on Sunday, two or less, and I don't know if it's probably what I said in the last week. But it's always interesting in the sense that I'm always jotting down some notes on different things and choosing a lot of how to look at the way I'm going to do it. And it ought to be a really good thing. It ought to be a really good study. And then the week comes along where I actually have to flesh it out completely. And I look at it with a good thing. I don't have to start off, but every week I do that sort of thing, trying to get this stuff out. But um, it, it, it struck me that there is kind of a thing, so I really like how pastor does race by race, because I want to go through um, sections of scripture that maybe would be covered if you didn't do race by race, because you really can do it in the third and then jump in on the other thing. But also, I just make sure that you do any of that, that, uh, if you never say how long it's going to take to cover you, then you just keep the news of the situation going right out of time. And hopefully you don't have any situation like we do when you're right out of time and you have to try to um, stop it and go for it. So it doesn't have a good one. But uh, it's a blessing to call that. But sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge. So this morning, uh, what I decided that I was going to do was um, I want to do something kind of different. And uh, I've been thinking a lot about the stuff that I am trying to figure out for myself. So almost everything that I ever teach on or preach on is really, if you want to relate it to something to me, it comes from me seeing something that I'm doing or something I'm not doing that I study to give you some questions. I'm not happy with what I'm doing. I'm not happy with what I'm doing. And uh, over time, I've always tried to come up with what is the best, the most effective way to be used my time with reading. Because I feel like I'm told in multiple directions to do the reading. I just don't have to stay around for the reading myself. And I know everybody can come back to this. We all have family obligations. We all have work obligations in a lot of cases. What's the best to do with our own? Uh, we have all these things, you know, stuff that has to be taken care of around the house that need to be done. And so, you want to do all the things that you know you should do. You want to read, you want to study, you want to spend the time in the world. But sometimes it's really hard to find a way to fit it all in. You know, because you look at things that block the time, and you might say, oh, you know, I want to do some reading, but I only have like 10 minutes, and then I've got to go run and do this. Or, I need to do some reading, but I've got some laundry that I need to do. I've got to go out and know that I really need to start that prescription. I need to get something ready for the week so that I'm ready for what's going on. And there's all these things always, especially in this time, where stuff kind of pops up. And so over time, I've always tried to figure out, well, what is a good day for the way my day seems to have a lot of stuff for me to be able to find a way to do that. And so this topic, which is a topic for studies to be out in the same and some passion on this type of stuff, it wouldn't make sense for me to do anything like that because I don't know when the next thing I'm going to get to do. So this is a so this is topic, it's kind of on that topic, but the name of the, uh, of the study to be is called What Is It Look For? And I think you'll understand that a little bit as you go through it. So I'm going to recommend, we're going to start with Carol, I'm going to recommend that you write something down, that you scribble a note or something. But the goal of what I'm going to give you in a second isn't for you to try to run to the same company you right now. It's the starting point. And I think that makes more sense to you as we go. Let's get a note from this book. Father God, I'm, I'm thankful. We had a really nice week. We had a lot of fun. Up here in my head, it's been coming through this time. It's been coming through a lot of fun. We never really know what we're going to do as we're going to do it. But this last week was really blessed. You really blessed this week. You still 
of a bomb. I mean, that's most of you have been in for a long time. Uh, or you can only say the same thing, and I'm sure you've heard about the body of Christ. The body of Christ is a, is a group of believers. Now, these are stone people, and most of us know this, it's a person that the body of Christ is comprised of people that accepted Jesus Christ in the same way as the church. Right? We're all part of the body. In Ephesians 4.4, 4, it says there is one body and one spirit, even as we are called in one hope of your father. And that the peace of God will be to the of and we do I wish there were more options on the world of my people. Right? Because I'm just going to do this and get to the thing I like about the world. The thing I like about the world is hard to be a it's hard to feel like you, you, you're not, you don't have the things you think you do, you the things you think you want, to feel like life has to be fair to you, to be fair to you. And I've always believed that even in the middle of the worst thing going on in your life, you should be able to stop right in the middle of that and say, yes, all this is too much and I don't know what to do, what to do. But you know what? And you know, as a, as a parent and as a father, to me that's an easy. I know there are a lot, I've talked to some of you, right? I know there are a lot of people that have kids that aren't sick. I have brought in that both of my children have to be responsible for So, one thing I do not have to worry about is that my kids are good enough, right? Uh, and, and I've talked to some people who, you know, they could say the same thing. You know, maybe they could leave the stage to the city. Maybe they're even involved in some form of the industry. That is something to be thankful about. Right? Because I can't imagine, and when I think of things like this, I can't imagine going through my life and thinking, oh, I'm going to have to take my life. I'm going to have to take my life. I just can't imagine it like that. Right. But, being thankful is a way to kind of reset your mind and put the focus back on what's in your mind. Because no matter how bad, we might be happy with it at any given time. There is so much in our history that we can go to church, that we have a Bible. I mean, people used to go through trouble with not even having a Bible when they were trying to talk to them. You know, when we have trouble, we can open up the page of the book and we can read through it. But we might find something that's going to help us. In our, in our present time of need. So, just the fact that we have a Bible, that we have a church with this, that we have Christian friends with this, that we don't have to hide it like they might in China because maybe the government is trying to do it. But we can be open about it. So, you can put a scripture to hide in the Bible. There's so much to be thankful for that the church is going to take this as well. But the body of Christ is made up of all these Christians. And it's a bunch of members. And I like that the word is used the body, um, but you know, we, there's a lot of ways to think about it. You can think of a body of water. You can think of a body of water. But he's talking about body like this. Right? That body, elbow, knee, you know, there's a bed for it. And you can go to the window like that. And you can go to the window like that. And you can go to the window like that. In uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 12, it says, For as the body is one, it has many members. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized in one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bottom or free. And have all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not the body, is it therefore not the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the hand were hearing, where were the smell? 
So now, God sets the members, everyone of them, in the body, as the best to him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now, are they many members? Yes. And the eyes are not stated at the end of the need of you, nor again the head to the feet of that the need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which seem to be less honorable, upon these we be said, more abundant honor. And our uncommon parts have more abundant honor. For our common parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lies. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care of one, the same care of one from another. The body concerns itself with our differences. So we have to remember that the body, when we think about it, the body concerns itself to often times as a body with the differences between the two, right? But it can't all be the same. It can be a search of body. Right? It could be a church of people. It could be a church of piano players or a church of, uh, you know, folks, even the ones that bring you to. So you have to have kind of a mix. And the thing is that with a mix of the body, it's important that we understand that, that this is a mix of people that are in different places in their walk with God, they are in different places in their salvation journey. Maybe they're currently going to a phase where things aren't going well, and they're maybe not doing well. Maybe they're not being maybe as obedient to God as they should be. And when I think about that, I think about my own life. I see how I have this applies to me. And I can look back over my past, and I can see through, the, through my life as a Christian, God got saved at around 13 years old. I can see periods in my life where I was saved and I was reading my Bible and I was doing all the things that I should do, but I can also see periods where I was. Well, I was basically back to it. Not doing the right thing. Not having the right attitude. Not caring about the things of God. But caring more about the things for me. Now, what if during one of those ten things you say, you know, and I'm looking at myself now and I look back at that, and what I really appreciate with God reminds me of the kind of things that I used to do those before and after I got saved, which I say, thank you, God, because if you look for that, I might tend to be a little judgmental. When I was in my 20s, I was kind of judgmental, right? In my 20s, Possibly say, let's be Christian, you can imagine, why would anybody ever mess up? And you have all these things, and it does it, going through my mind. So I tend to be more judgmental because if somebody wants to get the news the way I do it, you know, if somebody doesn't do the things that I do, or they're just not committed. You know, I have all these feelings in me that I think they're just me. I mean, I think everybody probably has gone through a phase where it happens. But I wasn't mindful of the fact that, hey, in a Christian life, people make sense. In a Christian life, people go through things. Can you imagine if when you got saved, if, if somebody sat together and said, this guy said, okay, now I'm going to tell you everything that's wrong with you. And you got to fix it right now because it's wrong. We would all do that. <laughs> and it's my life. I know Pastor, he was saved in the Christian family, maybe he wouldn't have to say that. But I was not. I was not saved in the Christian family. I was saved in the very world of the Christian And I was doing a lot of things. Right? But because God didn't dump it all on me at once, what I found was, I looked back at the time of age, I could see the perspective, that God said me things word by word. He knew that was wrong that I was doing. So he wasn't Christian in the right now. I do to do And then I that I'm going to listen to And by the way, it And then later I look at something and I think, you know, I don't know how I ever thought that was a good I really don't understand how I thought that was a good But God is just having grace with me because I was at a different place. 
And so when I think about those things, and I think about how I was in those things, I think, you know what? It's good to remember that because sometimes I feel like people can have a tendency to look at the body of Christ and other churches do. And so, well, why are they like that? They're so awful that they do that. So, you can't do it that way. Maybe God just hasn't taken them through that phase yet to show them that they need to clean that up. I mean, it's possible. I don't know. Right? I'm not saying that God didn't already tell us 50, 20 times. He goes more to these things, right? That's possible too, and that will be a fact, right? But it's possible also that God just could not dealing with that word like that in so we have to understand the differences in one another. We have to understand how that impacts our walk. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 1, do you therefore follow us of God as dear children? And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself to us as possible. And it's sacrificed to God for the truth to be saved. And I'm trying to think about that. I think about that. I know, I'll tell you a little bit about you. I like to tell people where I live in my country. I do it work out. I tell them where I'm from. Everybody that I work with, I say, the thing you have to understand about me is that I have to understand what I'm talking about. I say, I will underestimate the amount of time it takes to do everything because I think it's pretty much good. That's how some people work. So when I think about all God has forgiven and me, I tend to be very forgiven and almost to the point that I have to be perfect that I'm not expecting to be but that's me, because of what I would do with that. And I couldn't see how I could live with myself if I was too hard to have somebody that God was so good. And so that's me. I'm going to tell you that about me. If you talk to me, you can I don't have to bother about you. Maybe you're right. That is possible. I, am, I do understand it. And that's the thing I want to say. I am not a beauty to... Am I being too uh, relaxed? I think I can But I have to tell you, in my life, when I thought that, when I thought advice to people, the people I was proud. And they've advised me to take a partial stand at them. Sometimes I don't know that. I'm telling you, I'm really good. But at the same time, I'm not saying I'm going to do that. But I have always thought, I let them have a new experience to me. It would be hard with you, but it would be hard with people in that way when they were excluded from the church to get back to God. It is very forgiving with faith. Very forgiving. Now I don't know what was happening to me working with the study of the church. I have to do more with the church because it's God in the place. I mean, you know, if you keep rejecting all the numbers, you'll get it. It's a kind of thing. But that's the point that he reserves, I've always thought, for a church to suffer. Right? He was going to say, I'm stuck. The ability to say, But for us, we need to understand that we need to let him do We need to understand that we can't, and we can't let God, I can't get to see what a person is going to do. And I can't, based on that information, understand what he's going to do. So I walk with our walk. You know, it concerns itself with what God dealt with us on. It's, it's not the same for everybody. I have family members that I pray for. I'll tell you what I do. I have family members that kind of believe things and I don't have to do with it. And I don't know if anybody else is in that situation. If you are, 
then you absolutely know what I mean. But if you're not, that may be the case. Now, maybe some of you would like to be very consistent with your family about your values, your stuff like that. That might be the case. What do you want to do? And I spend a lot of time there. I don't know how this case is due to this case. I don't know how this case is because, you know, I wonder sometimes, right? It's just that little kind of kid running around out there, stealing things, and doing all these things that I, that I would do. It's just kind of good. It's just a long way to the kid out of it. If there wasn't somebody out there, somebody who either knew me, or maybe even somebody who didn't know me, that would save me. But God would be able to leave me and save me because I'm telling you this. When I say, when I think about counseling, I don't have to be particular because I can absolutely get it to you. I am fundamentally a completely different person because of that. I am nothing like what I was. Not even, I can't even imagine what I would do in my life if I had that choice because God seems to be so completely from what I was to what I am today. And while my, my history is not something that I want to complete with you. It's also not something that I want to remember all the way to do. If you want to do it, you can live life in that way, you can have it done. Right? But it's all been a part of what made me who I am now. Because I have a fear of forgiving if I have to take forgiveness. But you always have to remember that all you have to die. And we shouldn't worry about, well, I mean, we should worry about whatever we're going to do. We shouldn't feel like we've got to find out to fix. I wouldn't be right to do the stuff and the stuff. I mean, I used to do that. I used to do that. But it's not what I did not have a good relationship with my family because I had to do it. I had to do it. And what I discovered as I got older was, I had to do it. If I have no relationship with them, then I have no influence. And if I have no influence, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. So I found it better for me to just walk, just understand that this has moved away from me. Just to understand that I really wish they didn't do that, I really wish they didn't feel that way. But maybe I'm going to be able to do that. 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 In my immediate family, it's just very delicious. I just got it on 13 years old. Nobody was going to do it. But now, I believe my mother told me that it was a bad one on the way of the day. It was just a very bad one. I believe it was a good one on the way of the day. And I had a small, a small part, so we didn't get a part, and that's a blessing too. So that's what, what I focus on. I focus on the way through the world. Keep the ability to get the influence to be in the right direction. And I do it all the time. I mean, in truth, what influence do we really have? All we can do is give them something they want to be exposed to if we need to go like this. Right? So when I write a card to people, I put Bible verses all over that card. Oh, the sense of life is a really funny sense of what's going to be doing in the world and the world and the world and the world. It's just a good kind of expression of something that I know that is going to be a good thing to do with what's going to be a good thing to do with the world. Right? And I mean, I'm not trying to make it too much. I'm not, you know, I think we talked about it. I think we talked about it. That was good. That was good. But, I mean, I was a typical worldly person. You get to the world, you don't know anything about God, you don't feel like anybody can just tell you what God is wrong with and all this stuff. You feel like people make your own decisions and things like that. You're going to go down a path. You're going to end up in a certain place. Right? 
and that would move before I got started. And we've got a million things, every million, everything about it. I couldn't possibly do this job if I had to have a job. Because after I got started, because I started reading, and I wanted to learn more, I started to say, I'm going to be learning everything that I've learned about the last 50 years from being started to have a job about that. I actually learned everything that I was going to talk about to your people by learning the stories and seeing people that I just thought not people are really interested in this case to know if they're listening to what this case is saying. How do they do that? I mean, what is it about the case? I mean, even I felt drawn to certain people. And I wanted to understand how they did that. I thought, how would I have to do it if I had an effect like that? So everything literally that made it possible for me to do what I did for a living without all the technical things that were happening, we kept it to the technical things that were happening. So we had a lot of technical things that were happening. You know, the Bible tells us in the second century, come with love, that we dare not make ourselves at the number or compare ourselves with some that command themselves. But they, measuring themselves, by themselves, comparing themselves, comparing themselves, are not that. You know, the only thing that a Christian is really supposed to compare themselves to is the world. That's really it. And hopefully you're doing that. Because if you want to grow, unless you have somebody very close to you who is doing a good job following God, you're going to have to go to the world because it's our responsibility. We have access, everybody in this room has access to the three things in the Bible right now, especially if you have, at the same way you get the two. If you don't even have a lot of time to buy, I was down in the day when there was a flip to your body. You couldn't have it. And you walk in and look at this really cool, all of those things in the Bible. Oh, you didn't have to buy it. You didn't have to buy it. I would be happy to take it. But if you have one of those kinds of devices, you can download it. You can download someone reading the things that you can buy with you. We have no excuse for not letting the world come to a record. And let's remember that with everybody being in a different place, and maybe God is preparing, just like God is preparing me, I think, for something different than other people that I know that that's going to be. And some of them went similar to that, but they ended up with very different places. God has that long-term view, right? He doesn't look at where they're going to be in a year. He looks at where they're going to be in 20 years. And so he had a long-term view of me that would make it possible to take the things going on that I couldn't possibly have anticipated to where I would end up where I would end up today. But if somebody else could not say that a similar experience happened to me, and that a completely different path that is not just to be raising to something different. So I've learned to let people walk the own path, and I've learned that if the devil is a discouraging, then my role is to speak to be to encourage people in their walk and in their discovery. Help them find the path that they are. Encourage them to do this. Because I can tell them that I did my family, I can tell them that they're willing to read their Bible. This is awesome. Someone can even tell you, oh, yeah, I'll read my Bible over here. Right? So, you may be all the light that that person is going to be. Now, the statement is about the story that I want to be on the other side, and I want to be about the story. I want to be on the other side, and I want to be about the story. Romans 14, 4 says, Who art thou that judges another man's servant? His own master, he stood with his own. You know, we're all a servant of God. Who am I to judge another, another servant under God? He stands with us before God. God will take care of it. He doesn't need me to do it, God. Right? I thought about that with my kids because I did not have great role models for raising children, unfortunately. And I told my kids, I mean, I made a lot of mistakes in, in my life and raising me because I didn't have to come up with the other one. 
And so often, I come off and say, God, you know, I'm not to I have no idea. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say. Because he said to me, I have nothing. And God said that nobody's supporting me around. And God got me through. And yeah, all he had to do a lot of standing. He had to scrape off a lot of rough edges. I said he had to do a lot of work on me. But he got me where he needed to. So I feel like where I failed with my children, I would give it to God and let him understand that I will do what I need to do. I do the best that I can with the enemy in the future. So I need all the Christians to be ready. And that's what I need. Finally, is it finally? Well, I just need to see the book. I don't need to see the book. Um, where are you with your development? So all of us should be seeking to be doing more. I mean, the little part where I say we know the update of the Constitution. Don't die, baby. Don't die, baby. Don't die. You know what I mean? It's a problem. When you look at a, and I use baby because when you look at a baby and I think about it, well, for them to be able to go from basically laying there, Looking at the world around them, to a walking, functioning human being in their society, they spend a lot of time in the world. Trying to do something with that sort of thing. But eventually they walk. Well, eventually, first they fall, and then eventually they walk, and then they eventually learn to talk so they can communicate, and they eventually learn all these things that get them. We need to be a people in our Christian development. We say, well, I'm not there. I'll talk to people about this. Be uncomfortable. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. And just do something to develop so that you say, you know, I, I spent a fair amount of my life not feeling comfortable talking to people about Jesus Christ. But I'm going to die like that, so I'm going to try. I'm going to ask God to help me. Be uncomfortable, be, be comfortable, be uncomfortable, and, and to find, find things that you can do to be a better person than you are right now. And we talk about it, that's the basis of the thing you can do. The last thing I want to say is this. What do I mean when I say focus? I mean, keep your focus in Christ, be aware of it. All of us try to make a big baby development for a kid for the focus on what we do, what we do, what we do, what we see as a world of it. So hopefully when we're done with this one, hopefully our focus is no longer just on the stuff. Hopefully our focus is on the stuff. Don't worry if you're still doing it, sir. That's why we have to do that. So, we all It's hard to be selfish and be a decent person. Um, it's hard to be selfish. You've got to be able to do it. So, just that focus on it. You know, in, in three places, we're going to be able to do it. It's the master of 2236. It's the master of what is the great commandment of the law. He just said unto him, God said, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second one is like unto it. God said, Love thy neighbor as thyself. You are the Lord of the world. And these two commandments are the law of the Lord of the world. That's the important part. Romans.
and then you get the other last to get the third in one way. Even in this, that's a good thing to do. Even the tribulation state, the beginning, they see right there, they can fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. I'm not going to do that in my case. I'm 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 going to do that in my case. I always try to say by honestly speaking to people. I want to know the answer. And I let God know that whatever the answer is, whether it's the right answer, it's going to be or not, I'm going to check for the first. Right? And I reflect on that. And I read. Sometimes I read eight chapters. And then I get up and do it in eight chapters. I'll tell you why I think that's so important. Because I read it like a book. And then I put up and I think about what I did. What's that thing you see me? Why did those people go through me? Why did that thing come up? What's going on with you? What's the bigger picture? I've never told you that. And then I'll go back and read the next chapter. And I might still get these two chapters, but hey, the laundry gets done, the business gets put away, all that stuff that I need to do is happening. But I find that because I built it up in a little bit, I get real from it because I'm meditating. I'm trying to digest that little bit. I'm not swallowing the whole steak at once. I'm taking a bite of steak and I'm chewing at it while I'm doing it. I'm chewing at it. I'm breaking it down so that I can get everything out of that bite of steak that I'm chewing if I get out of that bite of steak. And so what I say is, I just feel like the life of the people that are spending their time. So take those questions. I didn't want to answer them during the time. I don't even want to answer them during the time. I just want to keep them. I don't 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 want to keep them. Father God, I thank you for this. I'll be coming to you. Thank you for this morning. I pray you do it every day. 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 I pray that you would give us all part of the answer of one another, part of the prayer of one another, part of the understanding. We're in a place where we're not going to let down. I hope you said it's that the people around us are not going to let down. The people around us are wanting us to get back to the back of the house. Thank you, Lord. With you and with the church. And I just pray, Lord, that we would not be the church on the second as a whole other one. I believe to hinder that as a whole other one. Keep the other one from doing the whole thing. It takes the other one. Now, thank you for everybody. Let me go to you. Lord, I pray you will pass it. Thank you for your time. Give me a blessing. And we'll have to tell you, Jesus, we're going to do the same.